Last week, I finally shared with you guys that I bought my first home at age 25. In this week, I'll be sharing with you how much you actually need to save for your first home, the five best places to keep your down payment money, how to choose where you are saving your down payment money, and some bonus saving hacks so that you can save up your down payment sooner. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adrian. I post videos every Monday on all things investing and personal finance. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely go go ahead and click the subscribe button below. It really helps to support my channel and it's free for you. By the way, I told you guys I just moved, so I literally don't have anything <laughs> in this room other than this mattress that I just put up. And this is my background because this is the best lighting. <laughs> so let's jump right into the video. So how much do you actually need to save for a home? A lot of people think that you need to have 20% saved in order to purchase your first home. This was actually made prevalent after the housing crash of 2008. It's actually not necessarily the best idea if you are a first time homeowner. And let me tell you why. First of all, there are a lot of incentives for first time homeowners. I've talked about these in the other videos I've talked about in terms of purchasing your home. There are a lot of incentives. Some of them include an MCC, which is a mortgage credit certificate, which basically gives you a tax credit every year based on how much you've paid in mortgage interest. There's also federal programs for first time homeowners. Some states offer grants for down payments if you are a first time homeowner. And and also there are reduced interest rates if you qualify. The reason some people are usually scared of, of not putting 20% down is because of something called PMI. PMI stands for private mortgage insurance. Private mortgage insurance is an insurance that you have to pay monthly if you do not put 20% down. You are required to pay that private mortgage insurance. When you eventually own 20% of your home, you don't have to pay private mortgage insurance anymore. The reason that exists is to cover the bank in case you default on your loan. However, the market that we are in right now, the interest rates are so low, taking advantage of a low interest rate is going to far outweigh the cost of PMI in the long run. How long do you have to save up your down payment money? This is something you're going to want to have a good idea of before you start saving. This could be less than a year, it could be more than a year, it could be five to seven years. It really just depends on what your situation is and when you are planning on buying a house. Obviously, it's not going to be exact or perfect, but just have a general plan and idea of when you're planning on purchasing your home because that's going to help you determine where you should be saving your down payment money. Also, one important thing about down payment money is that it needs to be somewhat liquid depending on how soon you are looking to purchase your first home, but it doesn't necessarily need to be as liquid as an emergency fund. So the places I will be sharing with you are going to be from most liquid to least liquid, meaning the most liquid is something that you could easily take out probably today. The first place that you should look into saving your down payment money is a savings account or a high yield savings account. A high yield savings account is just that. It is a savings account with high interest. It acts just as a savings account would with your normal bank. These are found through banks that are not your normal bank. So a lot of times in order to get these high interest rates, they are banks that are fully online or have some sort of capability that allows them to have such a high interest rate. But because of that, it's likely that you are not keeping your checking account with them also. Money in a high yield savings account and a standard savings account are going to be extremely liquid, which makes them ideal for somebody looking to purchase a home really soon, as in like within a year. The second place to look to save your down payment money is a money market account. This is not to be confused with a money market fund, which I'll be talking about a little later, but a money market account acts more like a blend between a savings account and a checking account. You are allowed to withdraw funds up to six times per month, just like you would with a normal savings account, but money market accounts have a higher interest rate than savings accounts or checking accounts. Money market accounts can be found through a financial institution. And this is also a good choice for someone if they're looking to purchase a home within a year or longer. So the third place you can save your down payment money is called a money market fund. A money market fund is actually a type of mutual fund. And although I would typically put a mutual fund under the stock umbrella, a money market fund is a little bit different than that. Money market funds invest in only extremely liquid short-term investments, which allows them to offer high liquidity for very low risk. In terms of liquidity, it acts very similarly to having cash, but
but at a higher interest rate than a typical savings account. And these interest rates are paid out in the form of dividends to the fund owner. Although there are no guarantees on these returns, they are pretty reliable. In terms of liquidity, fund owners do need to request to have these funds taken out so that they can use them. And fund companies are required to pay these out within seven days, but likely they will be a lot sooner. And just like money market accounts, money market funds can be purchased through a financial institution. Personally, this is my preferred method of saving money that I need access to quickly. And this is also a good choice for someone who is looking to purchase a home within a year. But before I go on to the fourth place, if you haven't yet, like this video down below and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. All right, the fourth place to save your down payment money in a certificate of deposit, otherwise known as a CD. When purchasing a CD, there is a predetermined fixed period of time and fixed interest rate at which you are purchasing the CD at. CDs can be purchased at fixed terms of anywhere from three months to six months to, to one year to two years or even longer. When you purchase a CD, you are locked in for whatever term you've agreed to and you cannot access that money until that term is over without penalty at least. There are penalties that you can pay in order to access that money. Obviously, the longer the maturity rate, the higher the interest rate is going to be. CDs can be purchased through financial institutions like Fidelity or Vanguard, and it may be best for you to purchase them through whatever financial institution you already use. And interest rates of CDs are typically higher than that of money market funds, but you do sacrifice liquidity. And also, CDs can be difficult to use for down payments because you are locked into a fixed term. So unless you know exactly when you're going to want to purchase a home, CDs are a little tricky to use, but they are a good option if you know exactly when you want to purchase your home. The fifth place to look at is a brokerage account. So if you're not looking to purchase a home for another five to seven years, honestly, the stock market isn't going to be a bad place to park your down payment money. Yes, there is a little bit more risk in terms of keeping your money in the stock market. Money in a brokerage account or money invested is going to be a little bit riskier than any of the other options I'm talking about. But if you have the benefit of time, you can use the growth from your investments as extra cash towards your down payment. Okay, so how do you choose which account is best for you. There is no one right answer for everybody. It's going to be different depending on your situation, but there are three things I want you to keep in mind when you are looking for a place to save your down payment money. First of all, think about liquidity. How quickly do you think you are going to need access to this money? The second is the interest rate. How much interest rate are you willing to sacrifice for a higher liquidity? And also some accounts have a minimum balance requirement or a minimum deposit requirement. So if that's something that may impact you, that is something to look into depending on where you're looking at opening your account. However, it is most important to have a plan. First of all, set aside an amount every month that you are going to be putting towards your down payment. Figure out which account is best for you and start saving towards your down payment. And three, find a few bonus savings hacks that I'm going to be talking about in a second that work for your lifestyle. Okay, here are the bonus savings hacks that you can use for saving for your first down payment or for whatever you want to be purchasing. First, automate your savings into your down payment account. Second, put all of your raises and bonuses and any extra money towards your down payment account. Don't even think about the extra money you're getting, just put it in your account and you'll forget about it and you'll thank yourself later. Third, put any tax refunds you get straight into your down payment account. Fourth, pick up a side hustle or a side job that can help. Fifth, eat out a little bit less or start making your coffee from home. Sixth, cut out your clothing budget. Honestly, I don't purchase much clothes anymore. Seventh, cut your cable bill. I'm not really quite sure how many people still have cable. <laughs> Seventh, I think, or eighth, I don't remember. Find creative ways to save even if it's just a little. So for me, when I like to stash some extra cash, I will go through my closet or my home and pick things out that I don't want anymore and sell them either on Poshmark or eBay or Mercari or on Facebook Marketplace just to earn some extra cash. And the last one is to go watch my video on how I saved $100,000 and follow some of the tips I have there. I also have a video on how to save money on a low income, which has some good money saving tips if you wanna go check those out. 
I think those would be really helpful for you guys if you go check them out. I will also link them down in the description bar. And let me know in the comments where you are saving your down payment money or if you've already purchased a home where you saved your down payment money. Hey guys, before I ended this video, I wanted to let you guys know the winner of the giveaway from last week for the copy of The Gospel Comes with a House Key. And the winner is Kalina Spinola. Congratulations. I will at this point have emailed you. And if you didn't win this time, make sure you're subscribed and you have the notifications on because I'll be doing some more giveaways before the end of the year, especially in December. I want to give back to you guys as a thank you to you. So make sure you are subscribed and yeah. And that is all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for checking out my video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe down below and I will catch you guys next Monday. Bye guys. Oh snap. Oh my. Okay. All right.